Good morning. How are you all this morning? Are you ready? Huh? Are you ready? Hold on. Let me see if I can get this thing to just sit here. Let's try that. You ready? Here we go. He led me through an alley <clears throat> behind his inn and into the stable where his tenants' animals were kept. It was dank and smelly and cold. My shoulders drooped, and I lowered my head. What was I to do? This was no place for a pregnant woman. I shook my head and about to tell the man that this would never do. But your mother touched my arm. It's shelter, she said, and I must lie down. The man shrugged. It's free, he said. I thanked him, secured the donkey, and grabbed a rake to form a small hay mow for your mother. She settled painfully and I pulled from our pack the last of our foodstuffs. I ate heartily, but could not get your mother to eat anything. She told me she feared her time was near. By the time I spread a rug out on the floor and fashioned a bed in the hay for her, your mother was in labor. She urged me to save enough cloth for the baby. I built a small fire close enough for warmth, yet near enough to the entrance to give the fire air and keep the smoke away. Soon your mother was into deep labor and there was little I could do but hold her hand. I had my nervous moments in the past, like the first time my work was judged by my father, a master craftsman, but nothing like this, not ever. Yet when the time came, that is to say, when you came, somehow God was with me. I did what I needed to be done, followed the instructions the midwife had sent with me, and soon there you were. Let me tell you, precious one, you did not appear to have been sent from God, red and squalling you should have attracted attention of the revelers in the crowded streets. But apparently, no one heard you but us. Your mother gently wiped you dry and wrapped you tightly in a cloth, enfolding you to her chest to keep you warm. Meanwhile, I formed a nest of hay for you in a box made of wood. Soon the rigors of the trip and the labor caught up with your mother. And she asked me to take you. She could no longer keep her eyes open. When you settled into my arms, I felt as if I were holding heaven. After you fell asleep and I felt my drifting, I needed you in the manger, and I pulled it close to where your mother and I lay. I draped my cloak over her, and she looked as if she could sleep for hours. I settled back, fatigue finally washing over me, and even more, I was overcome by a love for you that flooded my being. Not long after, I roused, your mother already had you in her lap. She was nursing you when I heard conversation in the alley. It would have been futile to ask passerby to keep quiet for your sake. I'd rather not have drawn attention to the truth that we had a newborn in a stable. But they must have noticed my fire and perhaps they merely wanted a moment of truth. A moment of warmth. Warmth! <laughs> but, 
But no, they were looking for something, for someone. This has to be the place, one said. I counted five man, men and could tell by their garb. And yes, I confess by their smell that they were shepherds. In the nearby hills, many tended flocks that would be used for temple sacrifices in Jerusalem, five or six miles away. Is there a baby here, they ask? How could they know? They had not been close enough to see, and you had not as so much as whimpered in more than an hour. I didn't know what to say. What was their business? What did they want with you? A baby, I said, determined to protect you. Why do you ask? Sir, the eldest said earnestly, his face bright with enthusiasm. We mean no harm. We were tending our flocks outside of the village when an angel of the Lord appeared and glory shone all around us. We were scared to death, but he told us not to be afraid. He said he brought us good news of great joy. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born tonight in Bethlehem. He said we would find the baby in a manger wrapped snugly in strips of cloth. What could I do? I stepped aside and motioned for them to come in. Your mother was settling you in the manger again, and she welcomed the strangers as if she had expected them. They knelt before you, thanking God. One told their story to her. Suddenly, the whole sky was full of angels singing glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to all all whom God favors. She merely smiled. And when they finally left, we could hear them telling everyone. People began finding their way into the alley and past the stable, saying, Is it true? Is it true? Is that the Messiah? I'm going to cut her off there today, and we'll be back tomorrow. Happy Monday, y'all. Have a good one. A blessed week ahead. My prayers are with you.